part two of the paper clay base sculpting video. Here is the face that we're working on. Uh, in part one we covered uh, the armature and getting the uh, clay bulk on and I covered some smoothing concepts and getting the eyes in and in this video we're going to refine the features and work on um, connecting the clay to the, the piece itself and then because the video is so long we'll break into a third section for the last part and then eventually a fourth section when I actually get around to decorating this piece and getting it ready for whoever ends up buying it to hang it on their wall. Um, that's why I, I opted for this because it will make this um, hang blur. So let's get to it. <laughs> Welcome to my studio. How you want to do it. Every human is different. When you get into fantasy creatures and they're all different too. So it can be a personal choice how you want it to turn out. It can be stylized or you can go for extreme realism which is entirely doable. It's just a painstaking process until you really get it down. So depending on how far into sculpting you are, um, I'm not sure that that the first heads you do should be you should shoot for realism. I think maybe start off with um, a stylized head or a character head, like maybe do an elf or a goblin or a fairy where you don't have to worry about anything but proportion. Um, you know that the the features of the face are about where they should be over them being perfect human proportion. That way you'll have more fun and enjoy the process instead of it being painstaking and annoying, which it can be. Once you get a little more practice at what the anatomy is supposed to look like, you don't have to sit there and play the game of, you know, what is different in this picture. <laughs> Two of these things don't look quite the same. Okay, and I can see my clay is lifted off the surface again. I think that's because I'm shoving it pretty hard to get it reshaped the way that I want it. Just to soften it a little bit so it looks more like a woman's head. It's starting to look like I can't think of who it was looking like, but it didn't look like a girl. Okay, and again, with this very hard brown line. to soften on the side here. Okay. I'm going to actually I think I'm gonna grab a smaller stylus than that one and come back in here again and soften this corner. Soften that edge of the nose, nose of the face there. Soften, soften, soften. Okay, and let me 
a little pinch of clay. Sorry, every time I move, it wants to go out of focus. A little pinch of clay in that hole. Because I dug too deep. This up and away. Uh oh. <laughs> Oops. Up in here a little bit. Take some of that weight out of the corner. Looks good. This pointy brush actually can be problematic. The ideal one is a, um, a fully rounded top brush. And I don't know where mine got off to. I must have two dozen of them, but I can't find them. So I'm just using what I have. And they're not ideal because the pointy bit wants to keep doing damage that is hard for me, see, like that, that's hard for me to uh, smooth again, which is really annoying. Okay, almost did it again. Still too thick. This scalpel is so many years old, it doesn't even have an edge on it anymore. So, if you were looking at me doing that, thinking, What are you doing? it barely is sharp anymore. It cut soft clay, and that's about it. Okay, throw that little ball away. It's pretty dry. I can feel it in my fingers how dry it was. Okay, and then just smooth that corner on out into the side of the head. Okay, let's move that up. Again, let your fingers and rub. Try to polish that shape and get it the way you want it. knits all those little fibers together. Each one bends over the other and gets you a pretty smooth oops, see pretty, pretty smooth surface. If you end up with a bunch of dry clay on your hands, you're not smoothing anymore. You're making the problem worse. Make sure your fingers are smooth and not all caked up with clay. And just rub it nice and smooth. 
if it starts getting pasty that's because it's drying and go ahead and add a little more water and keep rubbing working your shape make sure you're not lifting it up off of the surface and also make sure you clean your tools when you're done because if you go back to uh, polymer clay then your tools are still covered in paper clay and that paper clay gets stuck in the polymer clay when you bake it it turns brown just where the little bit of paper clay was you have these weird brown spots you cannot dig out. Well, you can, but you're gouging your work to get them out. That's pretty good. I'm probably going to add a little clay here, or here, I should say, to build that cheek up a little bit. Let's see if this nose is ready for me to do a little more surgery here. Doing this up here. And just keep changing the angle that you're um, sweeping the brush because that also helps to smooth. If you keep going in the same direction the entire time, I find you end up with um, pits in the corner, like a little hole, like a little poke hole. If you keep changing your direction, it seems to um, level all out. The fibers lay down better, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Shake that nostril so it's a little bit softer. This side too. Pull. I'm going to pull up on the tip of the nose here because I'm not super keen on the shape of it. And I'm going to sweep up into it and define that tip a little better, the tip of the nose. I don't want her looking like a little pug, but a rounder shape on the end of the nose. I hope you saw what I just did there. Try to soften this. Yeah, it's looking a little more girly. Try to smooth big areas as I go along. Oh, my hands are a mess. Okay, now here I'm going to stop for a minute and go wash your hands, which I am take some cling wrap and cover it snugly a little water on it so things don't dry I had to take my spray bottle down for the orchids so I don't have it up here to grab and just put it on loosely on top and kind of snug it in down near the bottom. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands thoroughly because they're pretty gross. And um, I'll come back. I can see I'm gonna have to wash my mouse too. Hands are washed. Table's cleaned up. Tools are clean. Let's try this again. All right. Mend. Keep amending the head shape because I'm not satisfied with it. Now I can also see that that eye has sunk back into the head again. So 
not where I want it, so I'm going to try to come underneath here and push it back up. It's also tracking different. So I'm going to try to fix that real quick as well. See if I can get under here. Move this eye. Okay, it's a little bit better. This one's lid goes up higher, which I did with this tool. Bring that line back up here. Nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical, but I don't want it to be that off. It's a little more than I like it to be off. Okay. I washed everything, and I got a new jug of water. And I have paper towels up here, though. But I'm not going to take time to go get them. I'll just make do. will end up shaving some more off the sides here. And again, no paper clay is ever really ruined unless it's completely dry. And even then, it might be savable. It's just a matter of getting it wet again and keeping it that way long enough to... Um, go ahead and go back and fix what's wrong with it. Get it all soft and able to be manipulated again. Okay. Not there, but we're getting there. Okay, now we need more clay. Come back over here. Grab some of this. And give this a squish. Try not to get my entire hand covered in it again. If you have a hard bit like that that's not wanting to attach, make sure you crush it before you just stick it back into the lump again. Because it'll stay separate. Remember, you want all these fibers to interlock again. Keep that clay nice and blended. And keep that covered. The jar. Keep it covered. Or in the wrapper, at least, with the uh, the rest of your clay. Now my lower lid here is a little short. I want to also indent here a little more on this side. More on that side. Alright. Now, it needs... A little more clay right in here. And I'm going to taper this a bit so I don't have to put as much pressure to get it in there where I want it. And I don't want it going on that lower eye there. More like up into here. And a little for the other side. Oh, this is perfect this condition on this clay this time. That clay out of the pack was a little on the dry side. I had, I uh, guess I had left it go a little longer than I thought without checking to see if it was still moist in there. Probably should have checked it yesterday when I decided to come work on a video. Sorry about that. Okay, and you want to feather this clay into the clay underneath of it. It's not even a terrible idea. I probably should have wet under there. Just to make sure everything bonds. The water works like glue. 
lets these fibers lift and knit themselves into the ones underneath. Yeah, that looks softer and more ladylike already. A little more cheekbone. And be careful that the pressure you're using isn't so much that you're lifting this clay up off of the surface that's underneath. Clean your brush so you're not dragging hard little chunks of dry clay across the surface. You're just using your bristles. See, I was using the paper towel to take the excess water back off, but I used it all up. I don't want to go downstairs and get some more right now, so. But normally there'd be a big pile of them that I can wipe my hands and my brush off on. Okay. The other side before it gets away from me again. under there. Make sure everything gets stuck together. I'm just kind of laying this clay in here and getting it generally laid down where I want it to be. I think I might have more clay on this side than the other side. We'll see in a minute. This is really soft clay. I'm not complaining. I have carpal tunnel on both wrists, and conditioning clay actually sets it off. It was from years of doing hand dip ice cream in my store, having to squeeze and turn and twist the dipper. I had a gift shop, and I made snowballs and ice cream and all that kind of stuff in there too and we were a lottery agent so we did that as well but I mostly sold gifts and collectibles and toys and action figures beanie babies <laughs> all that kind of stuff cherished teddies you name it we had it and my health kind of took a turn sideways on me and I had to give it up. That was not easy to do, but you do what you gotta do. But luckily, after many years of not being able to do any art, 15 years actually, because I worked seven days a week, 360 days a year, we only closed for five days, out of the year, I um, I had time to do art again, so it wasn't all bad. Hadn't done any art since high school or college, so it was kind of nice. Discovering clay and remembering, oh yeah, you know how to do this stuff. Just rinsing my hands again. They're getting kind of oaky. Ugh, nothing to dry them on. That's fun. In the trash can. Okay. 
All right, let's look at general shapes real quick and see. I'm going to have to wash that shell I just covered in clay. Ooh, you are ugly, aren't you? <laughs> we'll fix you. Just get in your shapes. Yeah, but it's still way too much forehead up here. Okay. I do like the cheeks better, though. And that's why you stop every so often and have a look at your general shapes and see if you're where you want to be or if you're looking like a space alien or the uh, most unattractive creature you've ever seen. In which case, do something drastic <laughs> and fix it. <laughs> the most unattractive creature is not what you had in mind okay and watch don't get too much water going on here like I said it'll turn into a puddle of goo and you will have to abandon it until it's no longer goo and try to Get this shape under control here with this nostril. Getting better. Liking that shape a little more. Let's reduce this septum a little bit. Soften the bump. Sorry, I have to keep bumping that mouse because the computer keeps trying to turn off on me. Just getting the extra clay off that brush. Or the extra water, I mean. Soften the nostrils. I want them to be smooth and not all lumpy and bumpy. And you also want them to be the same size as much as possible so if you have just way too much clay you can hack into it and smooth it on down into the cheek and turn it don't keep looking at it from just one side because you have to remember light Light in the room will play tricks on your eyes. It will put shadows and you will see size difference that's actually just a shadow. Clean that clay off. Be careful with big movements around the clay. You'll gouge something and not even realize you did it. Okay, so now this little mound here is going to become the upper lip. And you basically want to go from the corner... Let me get you in frame better. From the corner of this eye, the, the corner of the pupil itself, you want to come and mark, okay, and then the corner of that pupil and mark. Now that's not to say that, uh, and turn it sideways and make sure your marks are level with each other or you're going to have a crooked mouth. That's not to say that um, some people don't have a wider mouth, because a lot of people do, but I want to 
come like this. Go there. Come like this. Go there. Come in here. Like that. Now I'm going to use this tool if it'll let me. Oh, I need to make that gap a little bigger. Okay. Open up, please. Pull down on the bottom lip a little. Make a little bit of a gap so you have room to get your tool in there. Now the little divot above the upper lip you can start to establish that now if you like. And make sure there's enough clay there to do it. If not you're going to add more clay. Okay and then I like to use a tool. Doesn't matter which one you use as long as it has kind of a flat side and come under the upper lip here and kind of rock it up come under the upper lip on this side again and rock it up so you're pushing up slightly on that upper lip so it curves up and away and then you can shape it the rest of the way once you get it up there and it's up to you if you want a tiny little rosebud lip or a fuller Angelina Jolie kind of lip, how you do it. But the upper lip curves away and up like this towards that little divot. How big it's going to be is up to you. And it curves down into the corner like that. You can soften it from above or not. I hope you can still hear me. I'm trying not to speak too softly. The only time I'm loud is if my anxiety is up. Okay, now the bottom lip, we're going to give it a little bit more room with this tool. And I'm going to come in, kind of rock it, make a little indentation here, which is going to help shape that chin a little more and reduce its size a hair. So we don't have Jay Leno's chin. It'll also push some clay up to become what would be the bottom lip. Okay, we got a little dryness going on, so let's get some water down here. So the clay stopped cracking. Okay, in the corner of the mouth, I'm going to bring that around. And down. Unless they're smiling, the corner of the mouth comes around and down. Because the bottom lip is always a little bit lower, uh, under, a little bit under. Uh, below it doesn't stick out as far as the top lip most of the time. Some people have a bit of an underbite, so their bottom lip does stick out, in which case they're pretty much flush. She looks like an old lady with crooked eyes right now, but I'm going to fix that. So I'm trying to go quickly so that I don't have to do too much adding of clay on top. Okay. 
And I'm just kind of pulling in the same thing. I'm rounding, rounding the bottom lip down to where it will terminate. Yeah, this eye is definitely higher than that eye. I'm going to have to do something about that. I have to push that one up that way. Greater. There we go. This will do. <sighs> Let's see if I can get a hold of that eye. Well, I may have to lift this tape. Uh-oh. My hair broke. Bobby pin. Okay. Nope, it's not going to let me. Sorry, I just have to look. There it is. Nope, too big. Let's try this one. I don't know if you guys appreciate that I'm showing you my errors, but... In case you have the same problem, I want you to see how I fixed it. I'm trying to get it in the back part of the eyeball. There we go. I got it. See it moving? Okay, so I'm going to push it. I'm going to stick into the eyeball and see if I can get it to go Oops, where it needs to go, which is up into the face more, like that. I'm going to bring the face up to it. I don't know if I got it or not. Oh, it's perfect. But it's up where it ne needs to go now. Let's see again. Back in the hole. And don't push so hard that You misshape the face better, I think. So disorienting trying to get this lined up with the camera. Because it's basically looking at it upside down to the way I'm actually seeing it. So there's a whole lot of smoothing to be done still.
Now, this is something that I'd probably spend six or eight hours working on normally and spend an extraordinary amount of time fine-tuning before, during, and after the clay dries. I'm trying to just demonstrate how you can make a face out of paper clay. And I will document the whole process right down to the finishing. Um, it's going to be lengthy. The corners of the eye here where the tear duct are, I am just going to rough them in right now. I'm not going to finish them because the clay in the corner of the eye, it will turn into mush on me real soon. And I won't be able to um, get a good shape out of it. So I'm just going to hollow it out a little bit and let it dry. And then I will come back with clay again and um, do that duct area. Right now I just want to smooth that nose bridge and get it the way I want it. Like I said, clean your tools because those little hunks of clay will do the exact opposite of what you want that tool to do if you don't. Okay, a little attention back to the mouth again. I'm going to use this dry, drier brush to get in this crease here and soften that gap in the lip. And you want to hold your, I don't know if you can see the angle I'm holding the brush. I'm not going straight up and down in there like this. I'm holding the brush at an angle and I'm going under the top lip at an angle so that when you look at the lip from below you're not seeing this deep deep unattractive cut line going into the mouth. You're seeing the, um, the detailed curve of the upper lip and you're seeing the look of the mouth closed with the lower lip. Yeah, I'll definitely add more to the lower lid here on both sides as this dries a little bit more. Kind of looks like Glenn Close right now. <laughs> Not a bad thing. She's an attractive woman. Wasn't what I was shooting for. I think maybe I need a little more to the back of the jawline there. I want a narrow jaw, but this might be a little more narrow than I planned on. Let's see if I decide to add to this bottom lip or not, go a little fuller. She looks a little bit like uh, Cameron Diaz too. Again, unintentionally. Okay. Hope you can see something of what I'm doing because it's very hard to see what I'm doing while showing you what I'm doing. But that's why the two cameras. You always let the water help you with the smoothing.
and you can sand this like if if the clay texture is too wet you can let this dry and then you can come back with the sandpaper a real fine sandpaper of course depending on how smooth you were able to get it the first time and once you get it smooth to where it's where you like it the surface is going to look real flaky so at that point you're going to want to take a um uh, what's the word i'm thinking of um a sponge and lightly dampen the whole surface and then go back with your finger again and knit all those little fibers back down where they belong. Yeah, I think I am going to add a teensy bit more clay to that bottom lip. I'm not satisfied with its fullness yet. That might be too much. Mostly on this side. Oops, just broke my own rule. Let it before you stick the new one on. A new piece, I mean. Okay. <sighs> Make sure that light doesn't fall over. Sorry, hands in the way over here. <laughs> oh, it's such a balancing act trying to show you and do it at the same time when I'm alone in the studio. get in the zone. I forget you're supposed to keep looking at the screen.
doing the corners of the mouth is where I always end up wanting to um, make it smile because just a static face is kind of boring. But when you smile, you get into a whole different territory and that's when you get people tell you that the doll looks creepy because it's smiling at you. But other people think a static face is creepy, so I just let the face tell me what it wants to do. This one doesn't look like she wants to smile. Eyeballs traveling again. Come on. Go over there. Careful. Careful, careful. Oh man. Did you see that? Right across the nose. Ripped its way right on through there. A samurai sword. <laughs> That's why I don't do the tear ducts yet. I did not mean to gouge the nose there. It was not a good one to do. <sighs> they are tracking completely different. I'm just trying to reshape this chin so it looks more like a lady's chin. Uh-oh. I grabbed a bit of grit somewhere. wash my hands again. Little hard bits of grit end up stuck in the clay and they will not smooth down. So just keep washing. Keep washing your hands. Okay. Now I need to try to straighten this eye again. Don't want to wait until after the clay sets up. Okay. I see what's happening. Okay. It's the, uh, the lower lid on that side has more clay than the lower lid on this side. And that is a big chunk of what's throwing my eye off. You always want to flip them around and look at them from a different direction. Because sometimes what you think you're seeing, like I said, is as much shadow 
as anything else. So if you keep turning it and looking at it from all different angles, sooner or later you're going to see the thing that has been driving you nuts about it the whole time. It just wasn't as obvious as it should have been. And I'm just kind of twisting the brush into the corner just to smooth that because the brush has a point so it's not being super cooperative. So I'm not using the point of the brush but the side of the brush and twisting it. That way I'm dragging clay from it into the face. Looks a little better. You couldn't see what I was seeing, but there was a little more thickness on that spot right there than there was anywhere else. So I was taking it down so the two lids match a little better from one side to the other. Not expecting perfect symmetry, but Close. Close would be nice. Oh, sorry. I was bringing it close so I could see. Just trying to smooth that. Now that divot, if it stays, is not the end of the world. Because I can fill it in with some with a slurry of clay and water. It is real thin. You want to make it real thin like a mashed potato almost and then sort of just paint it on to fill a little divot like that instead of making yourself crazy right now trying to smooth it without misshaping the rest of it. But paper clay can be tedious to sand, so I'm not saying don't smooth as much as possible because sanding can take forever. At least it can feel that way. Okay, we're getting there. Well, that was section two. Uh, I hope you learned some things about paper clay. It's, uh, it's a great medium to work with. You can uh, use it in just about any type of uh, project that you want because you do not need to bake it, so you don't have to worry about if certain components will handle being put in the oven or not. And um, scale isn't an issue. You can go as big or as small as you want because it's, well, the clay itself is pretty lightweight. So there's um, pretty much endless possibilities with it. Again, this was a three-hour video altogether in recording it. And 
I had to break this into three parts. So this was part two, and part three is queued up and ready to be edited. So as soon as I get it finished, I will upload that one as well. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your feedback very much. So if you could like the video for me, that would be great. Uh, if you have a question or just want to leave a comment, let me know what you think. Um, that would be good also. And if you want to hear when video 3 comes out or future videos, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon. And YouTube apparently will let you know when I upload it. Thanks again, and I will see you for video 3.